Everybody has a friend who thinks they know everything about football, but they never really studied the game, right? Now we can't prove that, but we know. So what I wanted to do today was create a guide to learning football in the shortest time possible at a pretty high level. So the next time your friend says some stupid stuff, Hey, the Chiefs are going to be terrible without Tyreek Hill. He made Mahomes. You can immediately tell them they're full of shit and then explain why. Now, the difficult thing with this is unless you have a pretty in-depth knowledge of a specific topic, you can't just confidently challenge somebody's opinion. And thankfully, not all of us are blessed with the Dunning-Kruger effect that allows us to speak very confidently about things that we know nothing about. What most people do is just turn on the TV, listen to the experts whose job is literally entertainment, and then regurgitate their opinions. Were you going to plagiarize the whole thing for us? Do you have any thoughts? Of of your own on this matter? This is essentially surface level knowledge and the world has enough of that, so we don't need to add to it. But getting a solid foundation of knowledge requires a lot of time and effort, right? Partially right, but we don't need to be experts at this. We just need to understand some basic strategies play callers use to call plays and the rest is all fluff. So that's what we're here to do. I'm gonna give you a base level of knowledge from a coach's perspective. And I'll also give you some practical study tips that you can implement right away to really elevate your knowledge without dedicating your entire life to it. But before we begin, let's set some goals. First, we want enough knowledge so we can correct our friend when they confidently say stupid things. And second, we wanna develop a method of study that gives us the most gain in the least amount of time. So here's what we're gonna do. Step one, we are going to learn how to watch the game for study versus watching for pleasure. Watching football is extremely fun. And that's why we get hooked. But how do most people watch a football game? Generally, they focus on the ball and nothing else. TV broadcasts are set up to help you do exactly that. Now this doesn't really help us learn very well because we immediately lose sight of the big picture. So the question we should be asking is, how do players and coaches watch film? Well, they use two very different angles so they can see everything. Let's quickly look at the same play here from a couple different views. Here we have the broadcast version. Notice that we can only see part of the field and some players are even missing. This is a great way to show the ball and the fast paced action, but it's pretty difficult to study from. Now let's get to what players and coaches use. Here we have two different shots of the same play, a wide shot and a tight shot. The wide shot gives us a great look at the routes and coverage, basically the overall play, while the tight shot gives us a really good view of the box. So the main thing that I want you to take away is that if we're trying to study film, we're trying to learn, we have to be watching the right type of film. Step two, we wanna look for concepts, not plays. So once we have our film set up, the next thing that we wanna do is start looking for concepts rather than individual plays or even players. When you actually start to study the game of football, you'll quickly find out that mostly everyone runs the same stuff, especially at the NFL level. They just find different ways to tweak the same concept and run it a different way. Coaches refer to this as window dressing. Now let's take a look at an example. Here is the stick concept from a three by one formation. Now, I don't know why it's called that. It doesn't really matter. It's just a name. This concept includes a flat route, a stick route, and a go ball on the play side. And by the way, they can run anything they want on the back side of this. Now here's the same concept from a two by two formation, which is two receivers on each side. Notice that we attack the same spots on the field, but we get there a different way. I wanna quickly overwhelm you for one second. Here's a bunch of different ways we can run the stick concept. Each of them attack the same areas, but they get there in different ways. Now, why is this important though? Why does it matter what the concept is? Well, this is the fastest way into the mind of the offensive coordinator. Everything that an offensive coordinator calls in a game is done on purpose. It's either to attack a specific spot or a specific matchup. When you can identify a concept and know what it attacks, you can start looking for patterns on why things worked or why they didn't. Now this will drastically improve your knowledge in a very short period of time. For example, the stick concept clears out the corner and then has a horizontal stretch on the underneath defenders. As an offensive coordinator, I'm gonna call stick if I really like my matchup with the underneath defenders and I think we can guarantee four to six yards. Now there are a handful of different concepts and coaches generally break them down into a couple different categories. We have quick games, drop back, screens, play actions, sprint outs, boot passes, and trick plays. Getting to know all of these concepts does take some time, but actually a lot less than you'd think. You can learn one new concept a day, and within two weeks, you're gonna know more than 99% of the entire football fan base. 
Step three, understand that football is a game of cat and mouse. After we start watching the right film and we start looking for concepts rather than plays, the next thing is that we have to start thinking about football as a game of cat and mouse. Now, what do I mean by that? Basically, an offensive coach will call a concept and the defense wants to call something very specifically to take that away. But a fundamental rule of life is that you can always find positives and negatives about everything and football is no different. So let's go through an example of this cat and mouse battle that coordinators go through every single play. And by the way, once you understand this, everything completely changes when you're watching the game of football. So let's say the offense lines up in a three by one formation from 10 personnel, which basically means that they have three receivers to this side and a single receiver on the back side. And the defense lines up in a two high safety look or middle field open because as we can see here, the middle of the field is literally open. There's no one standing in it. And the offense is gonna try and put this outside linebacker in a bind with the stick concept. So what can the defense do in this scenario? Well, they could bring a safety down into the box to try and take that away. Now they're in a middle field closed situation because we can see there is someone here in the middle of the field. And with the added defender, maybe they're able to play this stick concept better. So now the defense has taken that away, what can the offense do? Well, maybe they run a four verticals concept attacking the weakness of the new defensive structure, or maybe they run a variation of the stick concept if they think they're getting man coverage. Whatever they do, it is always gonna be in response to what the defense gives them. The defense always sets the boundaries of what the offense can attack based on how they line up and what coverage they're playing. The offense must always take what the defense gives them. A well-designed offense has built-in solutions for multiple defensive looks or problems because you don't know exactly what you're gonna get until you line up and you don't have time to adjust everything all the time. Now, a lot of times you might see teams run very, very similar plays, but then one or two people are adjusted. This probably isn't called, but it's actually a site adjustment. For example, if they play middle field closed, my number three receiver needs to run it over. If they play middle field open, he has to split the safeties. So the next time you see a really bad play call from a coach, think about the goal line interception from Russell Wilson in the Super Bowl. Understand that there was probably a very well thought out plan of attack and based on how the defense lined up and what coverage they were in, the offense had to go with a specific solution. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Unfortunately, that's the way that the game is played. Claims of why that QB sucks or that OC is terrible, these are all based on the outcome, but they're not looking at the actual process and understanding why something occurred. If you always keep this cat and mouse battle on your mind, you will be so much more educated in your football opinions. Step number four, get your reps in. With this new way of looking at the game, you will start to learn at a very fast rate. Realistically, if you wanna understand football at a very high level, you will have to dedicate a good amount of time to it. Coaches study football their entire lives, but a lot of progress can be made in a very, very short period of time. Think about the 80-20 rule. And the beginning of any learning journey is where you make the most rapid gains. So if you just put in a few hours of study, you may be surprised with how much you can understand the game. And as I said before, just one concept per day, and in two weeks, you're gonna know a ton more than most everyone else who loves the game of football. Now, here's an important part of this that I don't wanna be overlooked. When you start learning anything, you have to have an open mind. You need to be curious about stuff. If you watch this video and a couple other concept videos on our channel, and you immediately think you know everything and you become your friend, you've missed the point. It's not flashy, but saying, I don't understand this play, and then spending five minutes studying the film or watching a video on that concept will greatly improve your long-term knowledge on any topic. Now let's recap what we talked about today. You know what film you need to watch and why, which is always a very, very important piece to the puzzle. If you don't know where to get film like this, you can use NFL Game Pass or even YouTube has hours and hours more than you'll ever be able to consume of this all 22 angle. You also know what to look for, which is gonna be the concepts rather than watching the ball or any individual players. And you understand the fundamental cat and mouse battle between coordinators in an attempt to win a football game. And we have a pretty solid plan of attack moving forward. One concept a day for the next two weeks and you'll immediately have rapid improvements in your football knowledge. And we can get started right now. Here's your first concept, watch it and nerd out. I'll see you in about 15 seconds after the ad.